my name is, uh, they call me Staples. I'm from Saskatchewan and I moved here about 10 years ago. So are you a resident here in this town? I am not, but I, I kind of am. I stay with a, uh, a very close uh, friend, a father figure, street father and, and mother that give me uh, uh, support, support workers almost, um, harm reduction for me. Five blocks away from here, it's dangerous. We're here, there's a, there's a sense of comfort. You know, people around here, we're all trying to take care of each other and support each other. We're right on the street, it's, it's, it's not like that. So this makes you feel safe? 100%, except I'm being pushed away because I'm not a resident and, and uh, I'm not allowed to be here. I had some good clean time. I had a year and a half uh, recovery until COVID happened. And I, uh, they shut down all my support groups and I lost everything, right? So I ended up isolating, you know, started, I, I, I picked up just a little bit of drugs to, to just kind of, to, to kind of numb the, the pain of being, being alone again. So that's kind of what's brought me back here and, and it just escalates. It's a progressive illness, right? So it doesn't get any better. It just gets worse. Yeah, I'm an IV drug user. I haven't used a syringe for a while, so that's good. The, the, the Dutchess, yeah. Oh, big time, yeah. You know, just talking about, uh, you know, family and, and uh, you know, experiences and, and talking about quotes, Buddha quotes and Zen quotes and all these different uh, Mark Twain and all that kind of stuff, right? Confucius and, and uh, so I've been trying to get back into detox on them over the last three months and I just can't get through the door. I'll get through the door and I'll turn around. Like there's just the, the cravings and the desire to use right now are stronger than the willingness to, to stay clean and, and uh, it's gonna kill me, right? You know, if you could just have a clean slate, start over, be anywhere in life that Think of what would your blue sky be? I just want to be a dad again. I miss being a dad. Uh, my girls miss me. You know, they need their dad in their life. And, uh, you know, I just had a really close friend pass away. And, uh, he's got a kid in his life, too. It's, I don't want my girls to have to grow up without their dad, you know? That's my fear, so... You know, my blue sky and, and uh, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel is, is uh, you know, getting back to work, you know, giving back to the community, you know, being part of society, not this outcast that everybody looks at me as. You know, being a family man again and, and uh, you know, being a part of my kids' lives and, and uh, you know, spiritually, emotionally and, and, and physically with sports and, and, and uh, just present, right? Their mother won't let me have anything to do with them right now because uh, she looks at me as a kind of a, an evil human being, let's say, right? Just a, just a useless drug addict, but I just want to talk to them, right? Tell them how much I love them and uh, miss them and just want to give them a hug, you know? Yeah, we need help. We need some change. I'm just a human being, just like everybody else. We're all the same. We're all struggling just on different levels. But this one is uh, life and death for some of us. You know, we've been pushed away as addicts and, and kind of condemned within society. You know, my parents were military parents. So I grew up with, uh, you know, kind of discipline being the uh, the number one, uh, you know, focus. Um, but there was no, uh, you know, there was no emotional support. There was no spiritual support. Physically, they were there, but they weren't there. Daddy. You know, my childhood, it wasn't, it wasn't horrible, but, uh, you know, their, their idea of discipline was, 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 you know, physical abuse, like, like soap yeah. in the mouth, Tabasco sauce, things like that. Yeah, wooden spoon, right? <laughs> So I was, it was ingrained in my brain at a young age that I was a bad boy, like you're a bad boy, you're a bad boy. And, and it, it just started playing and, I, and I, I, I started to believe that, you know, until I was about 25 and, and uh, you know, got out of jail for the first time, had been through treatment and detoxes and everything and, and started to, you know, understand myself and, and, and see for myself that I was actually a good person. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of childhood trauma. 
being numbed, I guess, because of the, uh, the pain and the hurt. You know, letting go and, and rewire. This is, you know, these are pathways in my brain that have been ingrained for years. So it's, it takes effort to, to retrain the brain and, and recreate these pathways, right? So, you know, uh, the realm of the hungry ghost, that was the one. And, yeah, and, uh, I read that. That's, so that's, I didn't read it. I read bits of it, but that's, that's, that's the realm, you know, we're stuck in. Us addicts, I think, truly, is what yes. I believe. 100%. Peace with pinhole mouths and enormous stomachs that can yeah. just never get full. Exactly. The, the Buddhist philosophy, right? Yeah. If you could say one sentence to the world, what would that be? We all need to wake up, support each other, take care of each other and be more kind and compassionate towards each other the best way possible. That's all I can say.